Hello, my PBC family and friends. Pastor Brian here with another quick bite, living the word. Today, our word's going to come from 1 Peter chapter 2. And uh, I just want to uh, preface all this with just kind of this idea here that uh, one of the things that I think we need to be doing in particular as the people of God, as, as his believers, as, as uh, Christians, is we need to be representing Jesus Christ well in every situation, whether we're talking about uh, in how we're reacting to what's going on in the world, to how we are um, sharing the word, to how we're handling our Facebook accounts, how we're speaking to people, you know, social media, things like this. Do you represent Jesus Christ well? Or are you representing yourself in your flesh? And what I mean by that is this. So uh, in, in 1 Peter chapter 2, I want to read something to you in verse 9 as, as an encouragement, but also a challenge. Um, and then we're going to go on from that point. Uh, the writer here says, But ye are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into a marvelous light. There it is. You, if you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are a Christian, a Bible-believing, God-fearing Christian, you are supposed to look different than the world. You've been called out of the world. You've been set aside to be holy. You've been set aside to be a peculiar people, something purchased, something that is different. Why? To show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. So many of us today are trying to walk in a gray area in our lives. And, well, I'm part light, I'm part dark, you know. I mean, I still have my flesh I battle with and da-da-da-da-da, making excuses for the flesh and excuses for the things we do. And I understand that. I get that, guys. I'm the same way. I mean, I, 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 we all have that, that, that area where we're like, Lord, you need to correct this in me. Because I want to represent you well, Jesus Christ. I want the world, when they see me and how I conduct myself, the things I like on Facebook or the things I post on social media, I want them to see I have a holy standard. Not just a standard which pleases my flesh or says what I like it or whatever the case may be. I want people when they see what I watch, I want people when they see what I speak and how I do things, I want them to see that I represent you well, Jesus. We've been called to set apart. As a matter of fact, it reminds me of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, where he says that we walk worthy of that vocation wherewith you're called. That literally meaning your work. He has called you to a work, and the work is not to please the flesh and to make sure the world likes you and that you like everything the world likes. It's to make sure that you're pleasing in the sight of your Savior. Because here's the problem. If we don't walk that way, how is the world, let alone our little brothers and sisters in Christ, ever going to know how to walk? If they think, oh, it's okay to toy with the world at the same time that we profess Christ, how are they ever going to know the light if we don't separate ourselves to the light? If we sit there and, and, and have, have, for lack of better terms, um, if, 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 we, if we have the darkness in our lives or even on what we like or post on Facebook. How are they going to see the difference in you? Oh, every once in a while you throw up a Christian meme, but then right after that you put up something that you know Jesus Christ would not be pleased with. You support something that Jesus Christ would not be happy with. And yet you go, well, that's okay. That's my liberty. That's my baseball goal. He's given us liberty not to sin. That's the point. But then he says this in verse 10. He says, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. See, we've retained that mercy, but there are some people who haven't yet. So don't live just because you've gotten your salvation. Don't live like any way you want to. So that because, well, it doesn't matter. I'm saved because there are some who aren't. Look around at your coworkers today. Look at, around at your friends and your family today and look at them and say to yourself, which one of them are you willing to let go to hell so that you can satisfy your flesh? So much of the world is looking at Christians, trying to see, are we different? Are we set apart? Are we holy? Are we peculiar people? Because that's genuine. And that's what people want is a genuine article. 
Not the person who just says it or puts a meme up on Facebook, but literally lives it. Thinks about every one of their actions in light of what is this going to do or how does this represent Jesus Christ's name. So then he says in verse 11 and 12, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. See, that's the point of our lives. Once we come to know Jesus Christ, our Savior, our job as his ambassadors, as his representatives, as a peculiar people, as a holy nation, is to what? Let them observe our life. That's what that word conversation means. They can observe our lives, every area of our lives, and get drawn closer to Jesus Christ. Think about that the next time you get ready to like something on Facebook. Or think about that the next time that you get ready to go to the movies to see something. Or get, think about that the next time that you're, you're ready to yell at somebody in a store or show a rant or a, a moment of anger because of you get cut off in traffic. Hey, guilty, right? You guys know me. Driving's my, that's, I'm, I'm that old, uh, uh, so what is that? Uh, I can't think of his name now. The Disney character that we don't know whether or not he's a dog or he has a dog. Um, Pluto, right? No, Pluto is the dog. I don't remember. Anyway, but Goofy. Right, it's that old goofy driving video. You know, I get behind the wheel, and, and I won't lie. I, the Lord really has to take over because sometimes if I let that devil guy inside of me take over, I mean, I'm not obeying and being a good representative of Jesus Christ. But He says there that we should have our conversation, our life, such that they may, by our good works, on the way we live, on the way we behave, observe that and come to know Jesus Christ. They don't need to know anything but Jesus. If you make that the focus of your life, if you make that the focus of what you're going you're gonna to depend upon, then they can see those things and you'll have peace. So I don't know. I know it sounds a little bit like a little bit of a rant this morning. I apologize if it does. Probably to a certain extent it is. Because I'm just telling us and begging each one of us, myself included, that we need to stop representing ourselves, representing a political party, representing a nation even to a certain extent, uh, except for the peculiar nation, the holy nation that Jesus Christ has set apart. Let's be citizens of heaven more than we're citizens of this world. I love you. We love you. God loves you. And God's got this.